historic scenes we are watching right now. Approximately 45 minutes away, we are less than an hour away from seeing a truly monumental piece of history. And you're watching it right here on Ali Dang TV and we're very glad to have you. So here we see the car leaving. Other than the summit, yeah. like the stock market and also the Supreme Court's decision. Let me interrupt. Um, I think we are seeing uh, two vehicles, two to three, a couple of vehicles actually, mm -hmm. approaching that summit location. Nobody knows who's in it. Looks like it is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's vehicle making inwards to that hotel with, like we've seen, Kim young a North Korea's uh, top. Okay, well, let's uh, just oh, watch this. Yeah, same. <laughs> That is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un walking in to that location. Looks like he's ready to uh, do business, has a kind of... This is really the first time we've seen President Trump since he arrived, since he arrived in Singapore. Here he is. Mm -hmm. That is US mm -hmm. President Donald Trump. Again, mm -hmm. another rather stern look on his face looking like he's ready to get down to business if you're just tuned in and wondering what's going on um, we are watching the north korea u.s summit here on adidang tv thank you ever so much for uh, tuning in and choosing us to to watch this moment in history i know you could watch this on many different other channels uh, uh, dr kim same question to you then watching president trump walk into the building there anything uh, strike you as unusual uh, normally he does give a bit of a smile and a wave to the press it doesn't actually look like there really is that much of a press presence there we don't know exactly uh, what kind of access they've been given but uh we understand it's highly guarded and they've only to take in a certain number of press to that island because they didn't want that to be a media frenzy. Mm. Uh, instead, we wanted a, the, uh, to focus on the summit itself with the North Korean leader and the U.S. president arriving and making that handshake. But apparently it seems like we have not uh, gotten that opportunity just yet, seeing their meet and greet in front of the cameras. But instead, what we're seeing on uh, the uh, video is uh, the both leaders arriving at the summit location moments ago. And as you said, with stern faces, both of them. Stern, but uh, still ready to, um, they just look like a couple of uh, world leaders going to any regular summit in a way. Like, uh, I think like Dr. Kim mentioned, most of the groundwork is done. Most of the details have been arranged. This is just a fact. They're going to meet each other and see how they get on. Uh, Heejun, turning to you uh, regarding the personal relationship uh, Kim Jong-un and President Trump might be able to form within the short time they meet each other. Uh, do you think, considering, you know, they are, they are different styles of people, it's fair to say, do you think there will be, because generally speaking, on a personal level, President Trump... The first impression that we got yeah. at, at, when he entered the building, I think it's very important that they are really determined yeah. and they're determined to make a big deal today. There we go. Oh, yeah. Let's oh. pause for a moment. interesting to see uh, Kim Jong-un didn't uh, respond at all when Trump made some pleasantries there. It seemed like he didn't really re respond too much. Did you see, what, what did you read into that first exchange? Uh, I mean, we weren't able to pick up the audio at the moment, but right. uh, that, yeah, it was just a one-way talk at the moment when yeah. we first saw the two leaders oh, it after looks like, It looks like they're having a conversation now when, the, uh, when their interpreters are there. Those four seem to be the only ones who will be in that room for their first one-on-one. -on -one.
really incredible scene, seeing the sitting US president walking alongside the North Korean leader, even Kim Jong-un uh, cracking a, a smile there. And, and that two shot, nobody had anticipated that would come, that, that we would see both sitting leaders of the two sides, the, the North Korea and the U.S., walk together, having a handshake, you know, exchanging some remarks before they walk into that summit. I feel really great. We're going to have a great discussion, and I think tremendous success. It'll be tremendously successful, and it's my honor. And uh, we will have a terrific relationship. I have no doubt. It was not an easy journey to come here. There are some history in the past that hinders us to go forward. However, we could overcome these issues, and that is why we're here today. And the old prejudices and practices worked as obstacles on our way forward, but we overcame all of them, and we are here today. That's true. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so we heard comments there from President Trump and North Korea leader Kim Jong Un. President Trump said that he uh, felt great. Uh, he Thank you. Yeah. figured they'd have great success. Uh, tremendous success. Tremendous success. He likes that word. Isn't he? <laughs> tremendous. And he felt very honoured. Something he said before uh, to be meeting with Kim Jong Un and Semin. Uh, you just walk us through what Kim Jong Un had to say. Yeah. You know, firing those away. But what a symbolic image that is there. It I is. mean, it's hard to describe really. That who would have thought that we'd ever see something like that so and then those two leaders a stark contrast Heijun I mean we've been learning about these two leaders over the past couple of weeks as we were preparing for today's summit but their age is different the way they speak is different their style of leading their country is extremely different what do you make of that oh like you said they have so many big differences um, first of all their age President Donald Trump is 71, whereas Kim Jong-un is only in his mid-30s, mm. presumably. And his personality, Trump is known to be very bossy. He likes to have the upper hand and everything. And even through Twitter diplomacy, like the so-called Twitter diplomacy, he tweets everything mm. directly. He doesn't go through his aides when he wants to speak out. But on the other hand, Kim Jong-un, he's known to be very careful and quiet. He's, he acts really carefully when it comes to diplomatics and politics. And uh, like we've seen through the rapid developments on the Korean Peninsula, Trump, uh, Kim hasn't been tweeting or he hasn't been saying anything on broadcast live like Trump did, but rather he's been very careful. He's been speaking through his close aides like uh, Kim ge and and uh, the other closest aides in North mm. Korea. So I think it'll be very interesting to see how they get along in today's summit and how um, the results, everything will unfold in today's big event. Uh, and as Mark has brought up, Donald Trump apparently had been tweeting on his way to the summit location. And yeah, just looking back, some of the things that he's been tweeting, it's, there were not all about uh, the uh, summits today with North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. But earlier, before uh, he was even, you know, getting ready for the summit, uh, a couple hours ago, you know, U.S. President Donald Trump tweeted his optimism and his um, confidence towards today's summit. I don't know if we can pull that up now, but uh, this is the tweet that he uh, wrote out today. Yes, he said, meetings between staffs and representatives are going well and quickly, but in the end, 
that doesn't matter. I'm quoting President Trump here. We will all know soon whether or not a real deal, unlike those of the past, can happen, end quote. That was President Trump four hours ago tweeting that. And those tweets could also be seen as a message to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, who's on the other hand watching all these perhaps monitoring. Talk a little bit more about those comments then. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that President Trump was going to be speaking, so I kind of uh, spoke over the top of him shortly. I mean, we'll be able to play back his comments afterwards again. And that the scene that we were seeing with a lot of the delegates and both leaders sitting in one table was the expanded meeting that followed shortly after the one-on-ones between the two leaders, which lasted for about 40 minutes or so. Um, we saw a lot of faces, familiar faces on the table sitting besides the leaders, the U.S. delegates for the expanded meeting, including his Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to his left for U.S. President Donald Trump and also John Kelly um, and the, the chief of staff for the, for the White House. And I'm not seeing John Bolton there yet, but we were told that John Bolton, the hardliner, would have would also time left considering that they're leaving mm -hmm. a lot earlier than expected. But I mean, and we're also seeing uh, that uh, the most important people involved uh, mm -hmm. in this uh, mm -hmm. latest developments regard in regards to North Korea US relations are there. That's right. They're there. And these are the people you want to see. They had their meal with their aides after they talked alone for about 40 minutes, one on one, face to face with their uh, interpreters by their sides. And then they were joined by their aides on their sides for extended talks. And then they had their working lunch with uh, more of their aides joining them, including some of the main uh, figures uh, from their respective sides. And now they're on to a stroll. How nice is that, Juan, right? <laughs> yeah, that stroll reminds us the uh, similar uh, site that we saw when inter-Korean summit talks mm. were held. Uh, South Korean President Moon Jae-in and uh, North Korean really leader Kim Jong-un held a long a progress, stroll together. Uh, really very positive. I think better than anybody could have expected. Top of the line. Really good. We're going right now for a signing. What are you signing? Do you have any comments about the deportation? What are you signing, sir? We're going to be announcing that in a couple of minutes. Mr. Kim, will you Now, we heard Mr. Trump just saying that it was, it went better, way better than anyone would have expected. So there we go. We are seeing the two leaders enter the room. Thank you very much. There does seem to be quite significant that Kim Yo Jong again takes such so an important role a very important next document. to. Sorry. Pretty comprehensive document, and we've had a really great term together a great relationship uh, i'll be giving a news conference at 2 30 which is in a little bit less than two hours and we'll discuss this at great length in the meantime i believe that they'll be handing it out on behalf of chairman kim and myself and we're both very honored to sign the document thank you would you like to say something to the press well, you know, Today, we had a very historic encounter where we overcame the past history and we embarked on a new beginning and we will be signing. The world will see a big change. Thank you for providing today's opportunity. Uh, thank you, President Trump. President Trump to make this meeting happen. Thank you very much. Okay. Starting that process very quickly, very, very quickly, absolutely.
about auto computers. You'll be seeing everything in just a little while. Uh, the letter that we're signing is very comprehensive, and I think both sides are going to be very impressed with the result. A lot of goodwill went into this, a lot of work, a lot of preparation. I want to thank uh, everybody on both sides, uh, Secretary Pompeo and all of his counterparts, they were absolutely fantastic. 네, 조금 후에 그 우리가 서명한 발표문의 내용에 대해서 꼭 알게 될 것입니다. 아까도 얘기했습니다만은 매우 포괄적인 그러한 문서이고 아, 양측이 그 결과에 대해서 굉장히 만족할 만한 결과입니다. 어, 이 문서를 서명하고 또 이런 그 만남을 갖기 위해서 많은 사람들이 전의를 가지고 노력했고 또 많은 준비 작업이 있었습니다. 그 양측의 그러한 작업을 해주신 분들에 대해서 감사드립니다. 거기에는 폼페오 장관뿐만 아니라 어, 조선 측의 그러한 여러 참여자분들에게 감사드립니다. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. now until the uh, we, we have a full understanding of what the two sides have signed on that joint agreement mm. uh, but something also to look out is that uh, he has been engaging in some of the talks with reporters in the room and in that footage we are seeing on, on screen is a live one in fact with uh, the two leaders from North Korea and the U.S. after having signed their joint agreement. It looks like they are holding their joint agreement. Let's try and listen to what uh, Trump is saying. Mark negotiator, absolutely. And we had a terrific day, and we learned a lot about each other and about our countries. What did you learn about him? <laughs> What did you learn about him, sir? I learned he's a very talented man. I also learned that he loves his country very much. When will you see him again? Will you be meeting again, sir? Will you be meeting each other again? We'll meet again. We'll meet many times. Thank you very much, everybody. President Donald Trump stepping well, onto the podium. Much, Let's have a listen. We appreciate it. We're getting ready to go back. We had a tremendous uh, 24 hours. We've had a tremendous three months, actually, because this has been going on for quite a while. Uh, that was a tape that we gave to Chairman Kim and his uh, people his representatives, and uh, it captures a lot, captures what could be done. And that's a great, a great place, has the potential to be an incredible place between South Korea, if you think about it, and China. It's uh, got tremendous potential, and I think he understands that, and he wants to do what's right. Uh, it's my honor today to address the people of the world following this very historic summit with Chairman Kim Jong-un, of North Korea. We spent very intensive hours together, and I think most of you have gotten the signed document, or you will very shortly. It's very comprehensive. It's going to happen. I stand before you as an emissary of the American people to deliver a message of hope and vision and a message of peace. Let me begin by thanking our incredible hosts in Singapore, especially Prime Minister Lee friend of mine. This is a country of profound grace and beauty, and we send our warmest wishes to every citizen of Singapore who really made this visit so important and so pleasant, despite all of the work and all of the long hours. I also want to thank President Moon of South Korea. He's working hard. In fact, I'll be speaking to him right after we're finished. Prime Minister Abe of Japan, friend of mine, just left our country. And he wants what's right for Japan and for the world. He's a good man. And a very special person, President Xi of China, 
who has really closed up that border, maybe a little bit less so over the last couple of months, but that's okay. But he really has, and he's a terrific person and a friend of mine and a, uh, really a great leader of his people. I want to thank them for their efforts to help us get to this very historic day. Most importantly, I want to thank Chairman Kim for taking the first bold step toward a bright new future for his people. Our unprecedented meeting, the first between an American president and a leader of North Korea, proves that real change is indeed possible. My meeting with Chairman Kim was honest, direct, and productive. We got to know each other well in a very confined period of time under very strong, strong circumstance. We're prepared to start a new history, and we're ready to write a new chapter between our nations. Nearly 70 years ago, think of that, 70 years ago, an extremely bloody conflict ravaged the Korean Peninsula. Countless people died in the conflict, including tens of thousands of brave Americans. Yet while the armistice was agreed to, the war never ended to this day, never ended. But now we can all have hope that it will soon end, and it will, it will soon end. The past does not have to define the future. Yesterday's conflict does not have to be tomorrow's war. And as history has proven over and over again, adversaries can indeed become friends. We can honor the sacrifice of our forefathers by replacing the horrors of battle with the blessings of peace. And that's what we're doing, and that's what we have done. There is no limit to what North Korea can achieve when it gives up its nuclear weapons and embraces commerce and engagement with the rest of the world that really wants to engage. Chairman Kim has, before him, an opportunity like no other to be remembered as the leader who ushered in a glorious new era of security and prosperity for his people. Chairman Kim and I just signed a joint statement in which he reaffirmed his unwavering commitment to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. We also agreed to vigorous negotiations to implement the agreement as soon as possible. And he wants to do that. This isn't the past. This isn't another administration that never got it started and therefore never got it done. Chairman Kim has told me that North Korea is already destroying a major missile engine testing site. That's not in your signed document. We agreed to that after the agreement was signed. That's a big thing. For the missiles that they were testing, the site is going to be destroyed very soon. Today is the beginning of an arduous process. Our eyes are wide open, but peace is always worth the effort, especially in this case. This should have been done years ago. They should have been resolved a long time ago. But we're resolving it now. Chairman Kim has the chance to seize an incredible future for his people. Anyone can make war, but only the most courageous can make peace. The current state of affairs cannot endure forever. The people of Korea, North and South, are profoundly talented, industrious, and gifted. These are truly gifted people. They share the same heritage, language, customs, culture, and destiny. But to realize their amazing destiny, to reunite their national family, the menace of nuclear weapons will now be removed. In the meantime, the sanctions will remain in effect. We dream of a future where all Koreans can live together in harmony, where families are reunited and hopes are reborn, and where the light of peace chases away the darkness of war. This bright future is within, and this is what's happening. It is right there. It's within our reach. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. People thought this could never take place. It is now taking place. It's a very great day. It's a very great moment in the history of the world. 
And Chairman Kim is on his way back to North Korea. And I know for a fact, as soon as he arrives, he's going to start a process that's going to make a lot of people very happy and very safe. So it's an honor to be with everybody today. The media, it's a big gathering of media, I will say. Makes me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> but it is what it is. People understand that this is something very important to all of us, including yourselves and your families. So thank you very much for being here. We'll take some questions.